take it off. Take the bandana off of your head, my brother. All praises to the most high. That's all we were asking of you, bro. If you want to be contentious about it, hey, look, the customs that we have have already been established right here in this book right here. And that's farther down. Read verse 19 as well. Read verse 19. Verse 19. For there must be also heresies among you. Now, the heresy is anything that goes contrary to the scriptures. The scripture says that a man, if he's praying or prophesying, has to have his head uncovered. The heresy would be, well, I think that's Paul's opinion. Read it out. The heresy would be, uh, well... He, 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 he made a, a question mark, so I don't really got to follow that. So let me ask you this. How do you choose which scriptures you follow and which ones you don't? Bring it out. I don't get to choose. Well, you, you obviously did because we told you you got to have your head uncovered, and you said you feel like that's his opinion. No, the Bible told you you need to have your head uncovered. I mean, the Bible, I mean, the Bible says you can't add or add anything to it. But you, it says you can't take anything away either, and that's exactly what you did. Word. Right. I'm not taking away. I'm you did. The, the Bible says if you're praying or prophesying, your head has to be uncovered. You took that away because your head is covered and you're contentious against it. I'm not contentious. But how am I against it? Because your head is still covered. Right. That's how you're against it. Because your head is still covered. You're dialoguing about the scriptures right now. You're in the midst of prophecy right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the prophecy for the people that want to have their head covered. Give me Zephaniah 1 and 8. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8 is a scripture that pertains to you. This is the prophecy that you're in the midst of right now. Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 8. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So the Lord is going to have a sacrifice one day. And it, we're not talking about when he sacrificed his own self. We're talking about when he got to sacrifice you for your sins. Your blood got to be shed for your sins. Because Paul told us in Romans, I think 3 and 23, that the wages of sin... 6 and 23, the wages of sin is death. So when you got to get put to death for your own sins, you become a sacrifice for your sins because you didn't want Christ's sacrifice. Read that again. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes. The princes will be punished. The name Israel, you claim to be an Israelite? Israelite means princes of the powers of God. Right. So the princes are going to get punished, read. And the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel all people that are clothed with strange apparel will get put to death they will get sacrificed when christ returns you know what strange apparel for a man is you know having his head covered while the bible is coming out that's right so think about this think if christ comes on the sabbath day if he's coming right now the sky cracks right now the bible's being read all of our heads are uncovered and yours is covered. Who has on the strange apparel, us or you? You got to get sacrificed. You got to get put to death for your own sins. Give me Amos 9 and 10. Give me Amos 9 and 10. And then we're going to get what Paul said about the same thing in, in uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Amos 9 and 10, then Romans 6 and 23. Amos chapter 9 and verse 10. Uh -huh. And all the sinners of my people. All the what? Sinners of my people. All the sinners of my people. You are of God's people. And if your head is covered, when you're in the midst of prophecy, you are a sinner. You are in the midst of your sins. Read on. Shall die by the sword. They all got to die by the sword. That's the sacrifice we just read in Zephaniah 1 and 8. Now I'm going to show you that Paul said the same thing. Read that. Romans 6 and 23. Uh, For the wages of sin is death. The, the what? The wages of sin is death. Zacchaeus, now obviously you don't believe that. Because this, what is, what is sin, Zacchaeus? It's death. No. It's not, transgressions. Transgressions against what? I forgot. We're going to read it for you. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgressive also the law so the bible says sin is the transgression of what zacchaeus the law, the law. now what did paul say in first corinthians 14 first corinthians chapter 14 
What do you want? Verse 37. Verse 37. Uh -huh. If any man think himself to be a prophet uh -huh. or a spiritual. So if you think yourself to be a prophet or spiritual, read. Let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto, unto you. The things that Paul wrote unto us in 1 Corinthians 11 to take your head covering off when you're in the midst of prophecy or in the midst of prayer. Are the commandments of the Lord. Yes, these are the laws of God. So if you break these laws with the head being covered while prophecy is coming up, you're in the midst of sin. And if you're a sinner, according to Amos 9 and 10, what's going to happen? Death. You're going to die by the sword. Now, is that little bandana worth everlasting life to you? Or why do you still have it on your head when we keep bringing up the scriptures to you? Take it off. Take the bandana off of your head, my brother. All praises to the most high. That's all we were asking of you, bro. I got one more question before I go. What's your question? You don't think that women can prophesy the truth, too? Yeah, they can absolutely prophesy according to Titus chapter 2. Absolutely. They can prophesy through their actions, and they can prophesy when they teach uh, according to Titus chapter 2. Now, we, now we what's, what's, your, what's your issue with the women? Huh? I don't have issues with the women at all. I don't. But what do you what do, what what do you have an issue with that we teach that you feel differently about when it comes to women? Um, that it's kind of aggressive. We teach aggressive toward women. Aggressively. Aggressively toward women. I love my wife, man. That's right. I got two daughters, man. I, I'm not aggressive. To, right. Hey, who hates their wife? I'm not saying nobody hates their wife. Who's aggressive their toward their women? Okay. Hey, brothers, raise your hand if you beat your women up, if you holler and scream, if you curse your women out. If you disrespect, none, none of these brothers up here do what you saying that, that we do. No, sir. We, we love our sisters, man. That's right. Look, look, matter of fact, what did Paul just say? H hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians 11. And uh, I think it was like verse 9 when he said, neither is the man nor the woman. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. So we have that understanding. Yeah. That we're not of the woman, neither do we act like we're of women. Now, what's, what's happened in America is men have been raised to be soft right. and to idolize and worship women. Right. Now, none of us worship women either. Right. We've repented from the ways that have uh, steamed women over men. Right. Neither, do we, neither do we equate women with men. There's no such thing as 50-50. The woman is not equal to the man. She's of the man. She was created for the man. And our women understand that as long as, uh, along with our men understand that. I'm not sure that you understand that, so that's something that you got to repent from, well, too. Uh, Let me finish reading this. Neither was the man created for the woman, uh -huh. but the woman for the man. Read on. For this cause of the woman to have power on head. So the Bible says that a woman is supposed to have power over her head. She's supposed to have someone that's leading her and guiding her. She's not a co-leader, right? right? So give me Titus chapter 2. You got what I want? I right, read that. Titus chapter 2 and verse 3. The aged women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine. These are instructions. Look, listen to me, Zacchaeus. These are instructions given by God in his holy book about what the women are supposed to do. Read on. Teachers of good things. So the women are supposed to teach good things. The same prophecies that I teach my wife, that I teach the nation, my wife also teaches those to my children. Hold on, we got you. Judith was a righteous sister, and she didn't think that she was equal to a man. She honored and reverenced the men. Read on. That they may teach the young women. You see who the women are supposed to teach? The who? The young women uh -huh. to be sober. They're supposed to teach the young women to be sober. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. The aged women got to teach that because what, what, what the younger women are learning from now is television. They learn it from TikTok. They learn it from Instagram. They learn it from housewives and, and basketball wives and all of that. All social media platforms. All social media platforms that are teaching our sisters evil. But the aged women that keep the commandments are supposed to be the teachers to the young women. Read. To love their children. To love their children. To be the discreet. Chase, keepers at home. To be keepers at home, because our sisters want to run the streets. Right. They want to be in everybody else's house. Everybody else's business. Read on. Good, obedient. What? 
Obedient. So these sisters are supposed to be taught to be obedient. That's right. That's not what they're learning in America, That's on social media, on television. Read on. To their own husbands, uh -huh. that the word of God be not blasphemed. And the word of God is continuously being blasphemed by our sisters, especially the ones in the Christian church that claim to be pastors and preachers and leaders of the congregation when the Bible says this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silent. Do what? Keep silent. So in Titus, the women are told to be obedient to their husbands. In Corinthians, they're told to be silent, be quiet. God didn't, God didn't create you to be the leader. He created the man to be the leader. Read. In the churches, uh -huh. for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. Uh -huh. Also, uh -huh. saith the law. As what? Also, saith the law. So they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Is that Paul's opinion? That's not Paul's opinion. I'm confused here. We just read in Corinthians, I asked you, was that Paul's opinion for the woman to be under obedience? Was that Paul's opinion? No, it wasn't. Okay, all praises. Neither was 1 Corinthians 11. You get what I want? Well, I have one uh, thing to say. Listen, this is the last scripture. I'm going to let you make your point. 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 11. Uh -huh. Let the woman learn in silence. Uh -huh with all subjection, uh -huh. but I suffer not a woman to teach. A woman is not permitted to teach the congregation or the men. She is permitted to teach the young women and the children. So you're saying Jude, when Judah was preaching the word to them, she was preaching to men when she was not supposed Judith? to. Judith? Judith, yes. Judith was not preaching. Well, prophesying, as you say, to the men. So you're saying that do it wrong when she was prophesying the truth. The where, where do you read about Judith? In, uh, in the Apocrypha. Okay, all right. Give me one second. We're going to finish the scripture. But I suffer not a woman to teach, uh -huh. nor to usurp authority over the man. Now, the question that you got to ask yourself, when you read the book of Judith, did Judith usurp authority over the men? No, she didn't. Judith was in order. Judith was in, was in order, and she did what was necessary to help save her people, right. right? And the things that she did was toward the heathen. She didn't do anything evil toward the men of her own nation. She was helping everybody out, helping her own people out. Correct. So they can come to deliverance because some of them were being headstrong. Some of them uh, were listening. Some went against her. But in uh, Judith chapter 8, verse 14, saying, how can you comprehend the things of God when you don't know? Okay, that's fine. No, no, none of that goes to anything to say that we are aggressive toward our women. No, none of these men. Well, I apologize for saying that. All praises to the Most High. Christ said you got to repent. So all praise you repented from that. Num that numbers 27. Oops. Numbers 27 and verse 16. Uh -huh. Let the Lord, excuse me. Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation. So God is going to set a man over the congregation. Now, when a, if a woman is in the midst of prophecy, then she's in the midst of prophecy through her actions, right? So when the Bible prophesied that we would stand up upon our feet, right, that we come back to the, the, the heritage of God, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, when you see a woman wearing a dress with fringes on it, she's in the midst of prophecy. If, if, if you happen to be at the laundromat and a, a woman, one of our sisters, hands your wife a flyer to show that the Israelites or the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans She's in the midst of prophesying, right? But that's all to help the betterment of her nation, not to usurp authority over the men. All right? You had another a, a question that you had? Um, well, I was taught my mother has been in the truth longer than I have. Your she, mother's keeping the commandments? She's keeping the commandments. She, she's keeping the rules, regulations, and stuff. She's like not that. breaking the Sabbath, and she's congregating on the Sabbath day? Um... She has a bad hip. She she has a hard time getting up in that hour of bed. Okay. So she has um so what she does, she looks at you guys, she looks at Sukari, she looks at the other into like camps. So she takes down notes, she reads it, and then What's your question? That's not a question, more like a statement. It's um said how the man represent Christ. Okay, 
the man's supposed to represent Christ and the woman's like the Holy Spirit to keep the man in check and make sure that no, you know no, 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 hey, no. Give, give me Matthew. This, this is why we don't allow statements. Give me Matthew. I'm sorry. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. Uh -huh. But I say unto you, this is Christ speaking, read letters, read, that every idle word, every idle word, that men shall speak, it comes out of your mouth, brother Zacchaeus. They shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment, you're going to be held accountable to that. That's why we don't allow brothers to come up here and just say what you want to say. Whatever you say, got to be coming out the word of God. So to say that the woman keeps the man in check is a heresy. Just like Paul's opinion is that a, a, a man has to have his head uncovered is a heresy. The woman was not created to keep the man in check. None of our wives keep us in check, right? That's what we are here for, for each other. Who got the iron sharpened iron? Anybody got that one? Yeah, give me that in Proverbs. The woman was not created to keep the man in check. It was the other way around. The, the man keeps the woman in check. The hope, what was the Holy Spirit and all that? Like, you, you gotta, you gotta stop that, man. You gotta stop that. Proverbs. Chapter 27, verse 17. Uh -huh. Iron sharpeneth iron. Uh -huh. So a man. So what? So a man sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. You see that, brother Zacchaeus? A woman was not created to keep me in check. You know who keeps me in check? My brother right here. Right. He keeps me in. Hey, brother. Hey, hey, where your fringe is at, bro? Right. What you doing stepping out the house without your fringes on? Right. Hey, bro. What's that that you order? Is that, is that, bro, you need to check the ingredients on that. It might be some pork in that. That, that is the job of. The man. Now I'm gonna show you the job of the woman, the the uh, the help in Genesis chapter two. Well, I mean, need a breakdown. So, you need a breakdown? Yeah, I need a breakdown. Of the woman's role toward the man? Yeah. All praises to the most high. This is it right here. Genesis chapter two, verse eighteen. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. So man was alone, Adam was created by himself, and this is what God saw. I would make him and help meet for him. A help meet, M-E-E-T. That's an old English term that means suitable or good. So God made a helper for the man. He didn't make uh, he didn't make the woman to keep the man in check, right? That is a woman usurping authority over the man. A woman keeping a man in check. That's not biblical. That's not according to God. That's not according to the gospel of Jesus Christ, a woman keeping a man in check. Now how my wife keeps, now how my wife helps me is I need fringes on my clothes. So she helps me by sewing the fringes on my clothes, right? I, I eat according to the laws of God, according to 1 Corinthians 11. So she helps me by going to the grocery store, getting the food and cooking and preparing the food according to God's laws. She helps me by, I go out, I make the money, I bring it back home, right? She teaches the children. That's how my wife helps me. My wife doesn't keep me in check. The, I, the, my, my brother, which is iron, sharpens my iron to help keep me in check. When I go off, my brother is the one that corrects me. When I need counsel, my brother is the one that counsels me. Not my wife, I don't counsel with my wife. I lead my wife. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is 